and welcome to Investment Questions, Insights from the Professionals. I'm your host, Pat Dunn, and I am a 45-year veteran of Merrill Lynch Wealth Management. I have literally helped investors through every single market gyration of the past four and a half decades, ending my career with helping them through the pandemic. Now retired, I am paying it forward by providing practical knowledge that makes a difference. Together here on Investment Questions, we will be speaking with investment credentialed investment professionals from a multitude of major firms who will discuss issues that you need to know about in order to grow and protect your financial security. Today, our guest is Arlene Wilson, a certified retirement income professional and vice president with Ameriprise Financial in Wilmington, Delaware. Arlene is going to tackle an issue that so many of us as we approach retirement really dread to even talk about. And that is preparing for the unknown. Welcome Arlene. Uh, why don't we dig right in? As a retirement income professional, when people come to you for retirement planning, what do you find are the biggest worries on their minds? Pat, the biggest worry that people have is will I run out of money before I run out of years? Will I have be able to pay for long-term care or type of any kind of health care in retirement? Will a critical illness cause my, me to impact my finances severely? Will I be able to be mobile? Will I need what if I'm, um, I'm, not able, I'm not well, who will take care of me? Those are the kinds of questions, but the root of them is the concern that paying for long-term care or extended care will impact them severely. Well, that's a good point. And since most of us would prefer not to deal with it, I'm going to ask the obvious question. Does everyone need long-term care coverage or plan for it? It certainly can affect all of us. That's a good question. And the studies have shown that 75% of the U.S. population over 65 will need some type of extended or long-term care. And remember, if you're a couple, one or both of you may need some type of services. Ah, yes, very important. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a difference or are they the same when you use the term extended care and long-term care? Long-term care and extended care are the same. Uh, long-term care or extended care, ex um, there are four different phases of it. One of them is home health care, where somebody comes to your house, you have an aide or a dietitian or a physical therapist, that's home health care. Then there's assisted living, which is a private space where health care as well as meals and housekeeping and other services are provided. There's, I call it adult daycare, they call it daily care services. And that's where People go during the week to receive care when their uh, primary caregiver is working. So they receive all the services. And then, of course, there's nursing care where someone needs continuing care day and night. And there is a difference between assisted living and nursing care. Could you elaborate on that? Sure. Assisted living is where people are independent and they... They um, have their own facility. It's usually a, an apartment and they go to meals in a common area and can socialize and things like that. Long-term care and nursing care is where someone's not able to, to take care of themselves at all. And they have, um, they have caregivers giving them meals 
or, you know, making sure they're bathed and, and uh, changed and that kind of st services. Now, most people rely on their health care when they need to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. What kind of insurance covers these kinds of costs? Okay. Well, met traditional medical insurance does not cover it. So, for instance, if you need, had a medical coverage in, uh, case is where you broke your leg and you had immediate medical care, they put your leg in a cast and then you were, had a brief convalescent period where you were walking around with crutches or in a wheelchair or something, but then your leg was better and you were able to be mobile again. Uh, Long-term or assisted care is something that, that comes into play when people are unable to to perform the six activities of daily living. It could be two of the six. So for instance, you get up in the morning and um, toileting, getting out of bed, transferring from the bed to a chair, um, bathing, all those kinds of activities are, are indications that long-term care is needed. I would imagine that dressing and eating would be included in that list. Yes, yes. All right. Well, um, then tell us what we're looking at from a cost perspective for this kind of care. And that's why we talk about planning for the unexpected, because it's very expensive and it adds up very quickly. The average cost in a nursing facility is about $93,000 a year. It's about $255 a day. And the average stay is about two and a half years or $277,000. So it adds up very quickly. Wow. Those are some serious numbers. So to be able to build this into your retirement income plan, Mm -hmm. is going to really require sitting down with someone like yourself, a professional who can map all this out, because I can't imagine many have the ability to carve out 277,000 uh, out of their portfolio. Now, you did say that was for one year? Uh, that's an, an average stay. One year is 93,000, which is a lot of money. And an average stay is about two and a half years. So that's why I, I mentioned that number. Oh, phew. I was thinking that was every year. <laughs> no. But even that, um, that's still a big portion of somebody's portfolio. Well, we do, um, we have some uh, serious numbers here and our viewers have serious questions. Would you have time to answer a viewer question? Absolutely. All right. Well, we have Megan S. from Greenville, Delaware, who asks a question that I'm sure you hear an awful lot. Does Medicare cover long-term care expenses? That's a great question. And the answer is no. Medicare covers the first hundred days and it may not cover all the services that are needed. So if not, then what are the sources that someone has to look at? If Medicare is not going to cover this, what will? Well, there's four ways to, to uh, pay for this. Uh, the first thing is, is government services. However, that's Medicaid. And in order to qualify for Medicaid, you'd have to be, um, spend all your money. You wouldn't have any, uh, you know, any, any, uh, funds that available. So that's where Medicaid would come in. And the other thing with Medicaid is it's not always covers all the services and some places don't uh, allow Medicaid uh, patients. So it, it gives the, the patient less options. Then there's self-funding and self-funding sounds like a great idea, except for the fact that you have to look at when you need that money, let's say you needed $93,000, where would it come from? Are you going to sell investment assets? Are you going to sell retirement assets? If you sell, you have to, there's a lot of considerations. If you're selling retirement assets, then you're with, you have, have taxable event. And if you're in the 28% tax bracket, 
factor in a dollar forty for every dollar you need, and then other considerations for taxable assets. You might have some capital gains or other taxes, you know, in, involved. So that's self-funding, and then there's long-term care, and a lot of people have long-term care, and the reality of a long-term care is. There's a waiting period, and maybe anywhere from three to six months. So before you can utilize the long-term care, it's important to have money set aside for at least three months and possibly six months to pay for the for the extended care. And then there's a life insurance policy with a long-term care rider that's been um, utilized, in you know today, and that's also a way to fund long-term care. Hmm. Now, if you had to choose whether you bought a long-term care and policy or a life insurance with a long-term care rider, which would you prefer? The life insurance, because you can use up to, depending on the company, you would could use up to a hundred percent of the、uh, benefit base for long-term care, and the dilemma with long-term care, the traditional long-term care. It's、uh, they can change the the rates, and that's that's another discussion. But you know, you, you might have bought a policy ten years ago and was paying one fee, and then the rates were raised, and you in order to keep the coverage, you might have to eliminate some of the、um, benefits. Or at the other thing that could happen is、uh, the rates would would increase for you. Thank you, Arlene. You have given very, very good practical advice for everyone. Now, this content is retrievable, both on our website, which is listed here below, as well as on our YouTube channel. And I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel so that you can be given updates on upcoming topics. That may be of interest to you or to someone you know. So, if going back to Megan S's question from Greenville, if you too have a question that you would like to see addressed on this show, here's how you do that. Welcome back. Now for the fun part of our program. This is where we turn the tables and ask our advisor, in this case Arlene Wilson, why she chose being a financial advisor as a career, and what her background is, and why she particularly chose Ameriprise to、uh, utilize for her. Practice, Arlene. Can you fill us in? <laughs> sure.、Uh, well, first of all, I just, I began、uh, as a financial professional in 1984. I was a single mother with two small children.、Um, there weren't a lot of women in financial services, as as you well know, Pat. And、um, I never thought twice about that. I liked the fact that I could help people, and I just said, no matter what, I. Was focused on the goal, and I saw that I fell in love with planning. Which what I liked about it is that I can help people in all phases of their life, and I've been able to do that through relationships with clients through their lifetime. I had one client that helped pay for his children's college. We bought a retirement home, a beach house, and you know all those different aspects of your life, and still make sure that you had sufficient assets during your lifetime. And as far as Ameriprise is concerned, I joined Ameriprise in 2011 because their values resonate with mine. The client comes first, and Ameriprise is really terrific. They give me all the tools and services that I need to help my clients achieve their goals during different phases of their life. And I became a retirement income planning specialist when I realized all the issues that people have in retirement, and depending on what year you want to retire, what age you are, whether you want Social Security, what, all those different issues. I wanted to become expert in that arena, so that's why I, 
I, I received the uh, certification and Ameriprise has really been helpful to me to give me, again, continuing to, we can evaluate clients and make sure they're achieving their goals. You bring up an excellent point there that I think is important for our viewers. And I would like to ask you to expound on that a little bit. And that is the relationship aspect between the financial advisor and the client. It sounds to me as though your clients stay with you for years and years, decades and decades, and possibly even down to the next generation. Uh, am I accurate in saying that? Yeah, yeah. I think the relationship is, is crucial. And I individualize each person's plan and as far as what their needs are. And um, I do have clients, I deal with the, with the children of clients, in some cases, the grandchildren of clients, and I can help them through all phases of their life. So yes, the relationship is crucial. Exactly. And that's what it's all about when you're talking about personalized advice. Mm -hmm. Arlene, I have a very sensitive question. Uh, I have found in my practice over the years that the need for cash rarely aligns with a positive stock market. Now, you've addressed self-insuring and paying for this. What do you, what kind of advice do you have to give if someone's going to be taking money out of their investment assets? We have to look at of your investment assets. What are you going to liquidate, and and what time period are we going to do it? For instance, uh, you know we talked about tax at deferred assets, the retirement assets. But again. You know, when you just said about the market, we have market fluctuations, but you're selling tax deferred assets, you have a, you have income taxes to pay. And I didn't even count the uh, state income tax, just the federal one. I said a dollar forty for every dollar if you're in the 28% tax bracket. But now taxable assets, what would you liquidate? You know, what if you have a stock that you bought at low cost basis and it's highly appreciated? and the market's dropping. Do you want to sell that? You know, I have to think about that. And are there taxes involved too? I mean, do you have capital gains taxes or any other, you know, situation that's arising? So those things are really important to think about. And it's important when we talked about, even if you have the insurance to have at least three months savings set aside to pay for the care until the insurance is, goes into effect. So here is yet another example of the importance of having an emergency fund mm -hmm. because you can't time when you're going to need these services. Mm -hmm. So being able to cover yourself for three to six months could be enough time to get through a drop in the market, or it could be enough time to let your long-term care insurance kick in. Well, here's another question because I ran into this a lot oh, I don't need long-term care insurance. My family's going to take care of me. And what do you have to say about that? Well, it's wonderful that you have well-intentioned family members, but there's two things to think about. One of them is it may not be um, feasible for them to take off from work to take care of you or do, you know, be available. Or you may need services that they can't provide and for instance, my girlfriend was taking care of her mother and, and she was giving her mother a shower and guess who fell and broke her arm? Because she didn't have this, the ability to do that. You have their skill sets for those things. And that's why providers in the, you know, that we hire are able to do those services. Very true. And sometimes the children are not in a financial position where they can step aside from work to take care of mom. Mm -hmm. So women have additional issues here. And uh, maybe we should do a show on that <laughs> at some I point. Think, I think that's a great idea because we can really expand on that. Women have special services, special needs and special issues. Well, thank you. 
Well, Arlene, you have been a wonderful guest. We're definitely going to have you back to cover more topics with us here on Investment Questions. And uh, for our viewers, again, I encourage you to uh, retrieve our content, both on our website, which is listed here below, as well as on our YouTube channel, Invest.